This is Logan Hall with the Eastern Shore Regional GIS Cooperative, and you're watching a video tutorial on how to delineate watersheds in ArcGIS for desktop. We have come up with a hypothetical scenario for this tutorial. We are tasked with generating a watershed upstream of a hypothetical gauging station at the given coordinates in Prince George's County. Our process includes creating our pore point for the gauging station, generating a flow direction, identifying the erroneous sinks in our DEM, and filling those, generating a new flow direction based on the fill DEM. Using the flow direction, we'll generate a flow accumulation. The flow accumulation allows us to generate the watershed once we have snapped the pore point to the closest cell. Delineating a watershed in ArcGIS for desktop does require the spatial analyst extension. So to begin, we'll open the customized dropdown and open extensions. Ensure that your spatial analyst extension has been turned on and click close. In order to delineate the watershed, we first need a pore point feature class. If you already have a pore point feature class, you can skip ahead in this tutorial video. But a pore point is an outlet on the surface at which water flows out of an area. It's the lowest point along the edge of a watershed boundary. Assuming you do not already have a pore point feature class, we'll generate one with the coordinates given for this hypothetical scenario. Before generating our pore point, We'll need to bring in our image service to extract an area for local processing. Since we're using Prince George's County as our hypothetical scenario, we'll bring in the DEM with meters elevation units. Now navigate to your go to XY tool. Select the units drop down for decimal degrees. Our given coordinates are negative 76.815145 with a latitude of 38.868287. We can click add point and then click zoom to. Can close our go to XY tool and using the draw tool we can convert our graphics to features. We're converting our point graphics using the coordinate system to match our data frame. We'll navigate to our output workspace folder and rename our shapefile. Check the box to automatically delete the graphic after the conversion and click OK. Add the new data to the map. Now we need a local area extracted for processing from the image service. So again, using the draw toolbar, select rectangle and draw a polygon that will encompass our pore point. Right click the image service, data, export data. Using selected graphic, navigate to your output workspace folder, select your format, and rename your output raster. For more information on connecting to the Maryland LiDAR image services and how to extract from image services for local processing, please refer to the appropriate documentation. Click yes to add the data to the map. We can remove our selected graphic and remove our PG image service. Okay. 
The first step is to determine the flow of direction to and from each cell within our dataset. Our DEM is likely to contain erroneous depressions, or sinks. In newer versions of ArcGIS, the Fill tool automatically performs the initial flow direction and sink process. Even though these first two steps are redundant, we will cover them regardless so we have a better understanding of what's happening behind the scenes as we proceed with delineating our watershed. Using the search tool, we'll open flow direction, which is found in the spatial analyst toolbox. Our input surface raster is our clipped PG raster dataset. Navigate to your output workspace folder. And we'll name this flow delete. Click save. And click OK to run the tool. If your output flow direction looks like this, it indicates that there are still erroneous depressions within your DEM dataset. Therefore, we need to identify the sinks within the dataset so we can fill them. Using the search bar, locate the sink tool in Spatial Analyst Toolbox. Our input flow direction will be flow underscore delete, and our output raster will be sink. Click OK to run the tool. If we turn off flow delete and zoom into our resulting sync dataset, we can start to see the cells that were identified as sinks within the dataset. Once these are filled, we can regenerate our flow direction. The previous flow direction and sync process are both incorporated in the newest version of the fill tool in Spatial Analyst Toolbox. Now that we have an understanding of the flow direction and sync process, we can remove these redundant data sets from our table of contents. Using the search bar, navigate to and open the fill tool spatial analyst. Our input surface raster will be our clipped PG County DEM. Navigate to your output workspace folder and this will be named fill. Click OK to run the tool. Now that we have a filled DEM, we can generate a new flow direction. Navigate to and open the flow direction tool spatial analyst. Our input surface raster will be fill. Navigate to your output workspace folder and name the output raster flow underscore dir. Click save and click OK. Compared to our previous flow direction, now we have appropriate values associated with each cell. Understanding the value and color representation, starting at an east azimuth, value of 1 is an east flowing cell. As we move clockwise, 2 is southeast, 4 is south, 8 is southwest, 16 is west. 32 is northwest, 64 is north, and 128 is northeast. If we zoom in, 
to our cell resolution. We can start to understand the relationship between the flow of water and our DEM surface. The next step in generating a watershed is building a flow accumulation derived from our flow direction data set. Using the search bar, navigate to and open the flow accumulation tool spatial analyst. Our input flow direction raster is flow dir. Navigate to your output workspace folder and name your output raster flow underscore ACC. Click Save and click OK to run the tool. If we zoom in to the resulting data set surrounding our Pore Point feature class, we can see that our Pore Point does not lie on a cell of high accumulation. The flow accumulation data set is used to snap the pore point to the cell of highest accumulation within a parameter that we set. Flow accumulation data sets can also be used to generate stream networks and stream order links. Before proceeding, we need to determine the distance between our pore point feature class and the closest cell of highest accumulation. If we right click our pore point, zoom to layer, and then set our map scale to 25. The cells here represent our flow accumulation data set. And if we use our measure tool, we can snap the cursor to the pore point feature, single click, and stretch the cursor to the cells of accumulation within our flow accumulation data set. We can see that the cells are within an average of three meters from our point, so we'll use that as our input parameter. Double click to finalize your measurement and close the measure window. Now use the search bar and navigate to snap pore point. Our input feature will be the pore point. Our input accumulation raster is flow underscore ACC. Navigate to your output workspace folder, and we'll call this snap underscore pp. Click save, and our snap distance will be 3, which is 3 meters. It'll match the map units, which is derived from our original DEM. Click OK to run the tool. Looking at our resulting data set, we can make sure that the snapped pore point lies directly on top of a cell within our flow accumulation data set. Now that we have the required input parameters for delineating our watershed, we can click search, type in watershed, and open the Watershed Tool Spatial Analyst Toolbox. We'll input our flow direction, flow underscore dir, and our input raster or feature pore point data is our snap underscore pp. Navigate to your output workspace folder and name the output watershed. Click OK to run the tool.
as we're still zoomed in at this close scale, we can see that the watershed's generated upstream from our snapped pore point cell, which lies on a cell of highest accumulation within our flow accumulation data set. We zoom to full extent. We can see the extent of our watershed. For additional resources, please visit imat.maryland.gov and to access your Maryland LiDAR topography server, visit lidar.geodata.md.gov forward slash imap.